Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my Cedar Point Recreation Park. In the last episode we wrapped up phase 5 of the project, where we have finished building all of the buildings inside of the park. All that's left to do now is to move on to phases 6 and 7, which are going to be some fine detailing, which I'm mostly doing off camera, and everything outside the park. And that will include things like the backlot maintenance, water park, hotel, campground area, roads, things like that. And we're going to be starting that here today with the parking lot. Now, because parking lots are very boring, and there isn't really a whole lot to talk about with what I'm actually doing here to build it, and also in celebration of this being the 50th episode of the series so far, what I'm going to do instead is a bit of a Q&A episode. I have a couple questions from commenters that I usually tend to address in the comments themselves, but I also figured I could talk about them a little bit here as well and expand on my answers a little bit. So I suppose the biggest question, the one I get the most often, especially lately, is what are you going to do after this? What's your next big project? And to that I say nothing. I currently don't have any plans to do any big projects after Cedar Point is over and done with. That of course isn't to say that I won't do anything at all, but I just don't have any absolute plans at the moment. So when it comes to projects like this, basically I only want to do something if I find it fun and it's something that I personally am really interested in doing. And if you couldn't tell, this has been quite a big project that's taken up quite a lot of my time and creative energy for the last six, seven months. And I think when it's done, I deserve a little bit of a break and I'm going to be taking it easy, maybe doing some other projects, some personal stuff on my own, maybe some non RCT stuff, but some me time. I never had any intention of continuing to do more large projects like this after Cedar Point is over. Cedar Point was the one thing I wanted to do, and when it's done, I will have accomplished my goal. Now, I will say that I do have some ideas for other large projects similar to this that I might want to do in the future, but by no means am I going to make myself start one anytime soon. I'm only going to do something when I personally find it interesting and I feel motivated to do so, and that might never happen. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. So I did get a couple of questions from user XXD Wheels. Thank you very much for responding. They asked, how do you keep yourself motivated enough to consistently post? And I think there's two specific things that keep me motivated to continue to work on this project. The first thing is a side effect of the fact that RCT is a very visual medium. After I work on it for you know an hour or so, it's really easy to look at what I've done and see the progress that I made. I've been keeping backups of the park after every episode and I can go back and see exactly how far I was and compare them. And it's really motivating to see the progress that's being made. Just being able to visually see how far I've come is really nice. And the other big thing that keeps me motivated is, you know, all of you on YouTube. I know it's a little bit cheesy to say, but all of the comments I get from everybody has been a really great motivator. It's really awesome to see that so many people are interested in this kind of stuff and that you think what I'm doing is interesting. You know, sometimes I work on projects and I don't know if anyone even really is interested or cares, but turns out that a lot of people do. So it's really nice to hear feedback from people, even if it's, you know, criticism. I really do appreciate that. I always ask people for comments and questions at the end of every video because I really do like that. It really does help keep me motivated when I know that other people are invested and have their own thoughts and ideas about things that I could do differently or or just have nice things to say. So I really do appreciate all of that. XSD Wheels also asked, what inspired you to start this endeavor and be so thorough? So I talked about this a lot in episode one, but I'll go over a little bit here as well. So I've been playing this game for a long time, back when the game originally came out in 99, 2000, whenever that was. And I've also been going to Cedar Point for a long time. Since before that, probably, I think the first year I went was probably 94, 95. So but both of these things have been a big part of my life for a long time. And I've always enjoyed the aspect of recreating real life things in Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's just kind of how my brain works. It really enjoys taking things from one domain, translating them to another domain, and finding those kinds of mappings. And I've always wanted to do a Cedar Point recreation. I've done many single ride recreations back when I was a kid. But I never quite had the tools or skills to do a really good recreation of Cedar Point. I wanted to make sure that my version was very thorough and included absolutely everything as much as I could. That all the detail was in there. 
And before the new save format came out, didn't quite have enough room for all that, didn't have enough ride slots, didn't have enough land area. But since that did go public late last year, it was the perfect time for me to get cranking on this project. And speaking of working on the project, here's a little more insider info on just my kind of work strategy. Uh, XSD Wills also asked, uh, do I make content in batches or a little at a time? So basically, since I started back in February, I just kind of work whenever I find the time. And whenever I come to what I feel like is a good stopping point for every episode, I will stop the, the build part, do a little voiceover recording, package it all up. At the beginning of the project, I was doing things sort of in batches. I was working a few episodes ahead. I would have two or three episodes scheduled in a queue, and that helped me to keep things a little bit consistent. That was back at the beginning of the project. Things were a little bit easier to do, a little bit easier to build. Lately, that has kind of slowed down, obviously, since we're doing a lot more creative, scenery-oriented stuff. I've also had a lot less time lately to put out new episodes for just personal reasons. It's been a pretty busy summer for me, and it's been harder to get some stuff done consistently so I can have consistent episodes out. So at this point, I'm just kind of getting them out whenever I can, whenever they're ready. And especially with these scenery episodes, I spent a lot more time recording each one than I did earlier on. In the first two stages or so, I would probably spend about two to two and a half hours of build time for every episode. And here with the scenery episodes, it's more like three or four hours. So that's about doubling the amount of time it takes me to put out one episode. But that's just kind of a side effect of there not being quite as much to talk about either with the scenery stuff. But I'm still happy I'm able to keep cranking along and, and getting work done, so. On that note, I do want to talk a little bit about something that I've been kind of keeping under my hat, and that is when I think this project will be done. I have been keeping a big spreadsheet of all the different phases and all the episodes and how long I've been taking for each build and projecting that out into the future for when I think the project will be finished. And my prediction has been fluctuating, especially, of course, near the beginning of the project. The less you know, the less accurate your predictions are going to be. But now that we're narrowing down towards the end, I think that we're probably going to be wrapping up the main build phase around mid to end of September is my current guess. And then after that happens, I'm going to be spending some time doing a lot of detailing and tweaking and probably sending the park out to a couple people for some review. Of course, who knows how long I will be spending on all that detailing and tweaking. There's still a lot of stuff I want to change, even though all the stuff inside the park is technically built. There's still a lot of stuff I want to clean up, overhaul some buildings, things like that. So by the time the park is actually quote unquote done, it's hard to say, you know, you could spend the rest of your life tweaking a park like this. I don't want that to happen. Of course, I would like this to be finished up here pretty soon. So I'm guessing probably around October, November ish, it will be ready to go but don't hold me to that. This is my current guess. I'm a little bit nervous about even giving a time frame at all because I know some people are gonna be like, hey, you said it's gonna be released X day and it's not here yet. So just keep that in mind. This is not a deadline by any means. I'm gonna spend as much time as I think is necessary to get it to the standards that I want to. One more question from XXD Wheels. They asked, will I branch out to something like Planet Coaster next? So I actually do own a copy of Planet Coaster, but still have never actually installed it and booted it up. Something I probably want to try to get into at some point just to test the waters. Based on what I've seen from Planet Coaster specifically though, it looks very fiddly, very detail oriented, especially compared to RCT. It might be a little bit too much for me to handle, but I, I'll have to try and find out. I have played a good amount of Parkitect, not as nearly as much as I would like. And I do want to try to get more into that a little bit in the future. Especially because I've seen some really awesome things people can build with Parkitect. And it does have a lot of more flexibility when it comes to the roller coaster builder as well, which I am definitely into. So if I were to branch out into a different theme park game, it would definitely be Parkitect next, based on the stuff that I've looked at so far. But I have no idea if I'm going to ever do another big project in it or if I'm just going to stick to kind of messing around. I have, like I said earlier, I have no plans to do anything specific, so. Just kind of going where my own creative motivation takes me. I think that's going to about do it for my Q&A ramblings today. It's still pretty amazing even to me that we've come this far at 50 episodes of this. Doesn't feel like it was that long ago that I started working on it, but here we are. Still more episodes to come. Not quite that many left, but we still got a lot of work to do around the outside of the park, so look forward to some more building coming for me. 
And as always, if you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.